friends, um, the messages that I've been sharing thus far has been somewhat of a testimony. Uh, it's what God has been revealing to me in my own personal experience as I began to question God in regards to these truths and asking him questions in his word. And I, I believe that um, I'm neutral enough to, to be able to reach many people like yourselves, those of us who are hearing these truths for the first time and, and are excited about them and so forth. Um, God has been taking me on a journey and I just felt strongly impressed to encourage the saints by sharing the, tr the truths that I have shown, shared these messages um, to encourage us so we can be solid. Does that make sense? Because I'm understanding what people are going through and, and, and how we're interacting with those of our brethren, you know, it, it, it affects us because our, our, our lives are connected with these people. Amen? Amen? You know, we are part of Israel. We are Seventh-day Adventist Christians. And, 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 and those, we are part of one another. So it, 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 is, it has weight when, when people say things to us that are contrary to what the convictions of our heart. It affects us because we have <coughs> close bonds with these individuals, brothers and sisters. So God needs to make truth so clear to us that there's no shadow of a doubt. And it has to be a settling of the truth both intellectually and what else? Spiritually. Spiritually. So everything that I'm sharing is actually linking with one another. We started off with Make It Plain, dealing with um, the book of Rebecca and write the vision and make it plain on tables. And we understood from scripture that under, to understand the end of a thing, you have to understand it from the beginning. beginning according to the book of Isaiah, chapter 46 and verse 10. So we go to the beginning and we discover that God gave how many charts? Three? Two. He gave two charts. So that's the template. How do we understand the end of the thing? From the beginning of the thing. So when we see write the vision and make it plain on tables, it doesn't say how many. But the way we understand the secret things that are hidden that shall be revealed is by ancient times. So we understand that God has two charts and we discovered that Ellen White saw in vision that these two charts were the charts of Bible prophecy. Amen. In other words, our, our, our theological belief system are embodied in this 1843 and the 1850 chart. Amen? Amen? All right. Then we discovered that William Miller preached more than one time prophecy ended in 1844. Amen? Amen? Amen. And we discovered that we don't have to go to Leviticus 26 to prove that there, are, there is another prophecy that goes along with the 2300-day prophecy, do we? We discover that, that uh, Hosea actually confirms what the other prophets have spoken of, starting the vision of the tearing of Israel and, 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 and Judah with Assyria, amen? Amen? And taking it all the way down to Papal Rome, to the period of Papal Rome. But there are some questions that we need to ask because understanding the issues, the issues is this, is that yes, there was an 1863 chart, amen? amen? But we understand that that's not the chart of Bible prophecy, okay? okay? Some other things we have to put on the table. So we, we have to look at the very fact that why is it not point blank, so to speak, that the servant of the Lord did not mention the 2520 in her writings. There has to be question, answers to that, right? Yes. There has to be an answer. Why would she say 2300 day prophecy and speak about that? Why do we not hear her saying anything about the very prophecy that William Miller and, the, uh, and, and his associates preached? You see it very clearly at the top of the chart. She says this was endorsed, this is the hand of the Lord that did it. The hand of the Lord did this one, and we see the very same starting point, 677 here. We see the explanation of the time here. So there has to be a reason why that God allowed that to happen. Amen? Amen. Is that a good question? Yes. So we have to give answers, right? So it just can't be that it is what it is. Look at this, look at this, look at this. We have to be able to give an answer for what we believe. Amen? Is that all right? So we're going to be dealing with, uh, uh, um, we want to give a title. I would like to entitle it, The Voice of the Lord. Amen? The Voice of the Lord. 
We're going to start our journey in the book of Revelation chapter 10. Revelation chapter 10 is the Advent movement. We see after that Revelation chapter 9, Revelation chapter 9, the closing verses of chapter 9, reveals the fall of the Turkish Empire. And then we see a mighty angel comes down in Revelation chapter 10, verse 1. That mighty angel is none other than Jesus Christ. He has a book open. It says open, open. The reason it says open, open is because at one point this little book was closed. This little book was the book of Daniel. The person who receives the book and begins to eat the book that's sweet in his mouth is William Miller. The prophecies are given to William Miller and thus embraced by his associates and thus taken to those who heard the message of the hour during that time. But notice what the Bible says in the book of Revelation chapter 10, verse, let's look at verse, let's start with verse 1. And I saw a mighty angel come down from heaven. Who is this mighty angel? Jesus Christ, clothed with a cloud and a rainbow, cloud and rainbow, we know there's been rain. Amen? And it says, was open upon his head, and his face was as were the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire, and he had in his hand a little book open, and he set his right foot on the sea, and his left foot on the earth. The sea represents what? People, nation, tongue. So if it says the sea and the earth, what would the earth represent? The United States of America. I saw another beast coming out of the earth. And we got to realize there were people in other lands who were preaching the soon return of Jesus Christ. You read that in the book, Great Controversy. Amen. So the message was rising not only in the United States of America, but in other parts of the world. We find out that when the book is open... Um, and he set his right foot on the sea and his left foot on the earth. What happens in verse 3? He cried with a what? Loud voice as when a lion what? Roar. Roar. What is taking place here? So he, this angel, he, he cries with what kind of voice? A loud voice as when a lion what? Roar. Roareth. Now, when Christ speaks with a loud voice as when a lion roars, something happens. Let's explain what happens in the book of Amos chapter 3. Amos chapter 3, you can hold uh, Mark Revelation chapter 10 because we're coming back there. Amos chapter 3 lets us know what happens when Jesus Christ roars like a lion. We're going to start at Revel uh, Amos chapter 3 verse 7. We read verses 7 and 8. The Bible says this. Give you time to get there because we're in school. Is that all right? This is a prophecy school. Is that all right? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I appreciate the deaths and... The, the, the notepads and everything, we're, we're studying to show ourselves approved. Amos 3, 7 says, surely the Lord will do what? Nothing, but he reveals his secrets unto what? His servants, the prophets. Verse 8 says, the lion hath roared. Now, who is the lion that roared? The lion of the tribe of Judah, Jesus Christ, has roared. But notice what happens when he roars. Who will not fear? The Lord has what? Spoken. So when Jesus roars like a lion, the lion of the tribe of Judah roars, he's also speaking. And when he roars and he speaks, notice the, re the reaction. For every action, there's an opposite and equal reaction. What's the reaction? Who can but prophesy? Amen. So in other words, when, when the mighty angel came down with the little book open and he puts his foot on the sea and the other foot on the earth, he begins to roar like a lion, and when he roars like a lion, he's speaking, and when he speaks, someone prophesies. Amen. William Miller began to prophesy. Better. William Miller and his associates began to prophesy, amen, because Jesus Christ has roared. He has revealed his secrets to his servants, the prophet. He is unfolding the prophecies of Daniel and the Revelation, Amen. So notice what goes on after this. We need to follow the story. Let's look at what happens in Revelation chapter 10. Revelation chapter 10. Revelation chapter 10. And the Bible goes on to say, after he roars, so we know he's roaring. If he's roaring like a lion, what, is, what happens? So, someone is prophesying. Then it goes on, and when he had cried... <coughs> 
seven thunders uttered their voices. So he, prophes- he, he, he roars like a lion, someone prophesies, and then seven thunders utter their what? Their voices. And notice what verse 4 says. And when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, I was about to write, and I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Seal up the things which the seven thunders uttered, and do what? Write them not. Are y'all with me, brothers and sisters? And what I want to bring out is when, when something is sealed up, notice, I'm just going to touch on this because this is a whole study in itself, but I want to throw it out on the table. Is that all right? Yeah. Notice something. As we look at that sealed up, we have to, to understand the end of a thing. What do we need to do? We need to go back to the beginning. Do we see anywhere when the Bible says seal up something? And Daniel, let's go to the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter 9, Daniel chapter 9, let's go to Daniel chapter 9, and we're looking at verse 24, Daniel chapter 9 and verse 24. And the Bible says in Daniel 9, 24, 70 weeks are determined upon thy what? People and upon thy what? Holy city to finish the transgressions and to make an end of sins and make reconciliation for what else? For what? Iniquity. And to bring in everlasting righteousness. Slow down. Here's a speed bump. And to seal up the vision. And what else? Prophecy. So we understand something here. When something is sealed up, according to the law first mentioned, what is being sealed up? The vision and prophecy. Are you all with me? All right. Now let's go back to the book of Revelation chapter 10. And I would like to go in more detail with that particular study, but I'm going to focus on this particular area and, 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 and move on. You got to be disciplined. <laughs> that makes sense? Yeah. All right. Now notice something. So, um, and when he was about to write, seven thunders uttered their voices, and, and it was, we was told to seal up the things with the seven thunders uttered. So we understand in that sealing up of the seven thunders, we know there has to be a sealing up of a vision and a sealing up of a prophecy. And this sealing up of the vision and the sealing up of the prophecy is connect, connected or linked with the Millerite or the Advent movement. Is that, is that clear? Now, let's kind of look at this thing even more detail. All right. So seven thunders uttered their voices. Does anywhere in the Bible talk about um, these seven thunders uttering their voices? Because the Bible explains itself. Is that clear? Yeah. All right. So let's look in the book of Job. Job chapter 37, I believe. Job chapter 37. Does the Bible ever talk about thundering? And, and, um, so we're dealing with seven thunders, but when the Bible talks about thunders, what is the Bible actually speaking about? The book of Job chapter 37, and let's start with verse 1. Job chapter 37 and verse 1. At this also my heart does what? Trembleth and is moved out of his place. Hear attentively the noise of his what? Voice and the sound that goeth out of his what? Mouth. He directed it under the whole heaven and his lightning unto the ends of the earth. Here's our speed bump. Slow down. After it a voice what? Roareth. Did we see a voice roaring in Daniel, cha- Revelation chapter 10? And when it roars, someone must do what? Prophesy. So we hear that roaring. If we see a roaring connected with the roaring, it have to be thunders, right? Right? Do we saw roaring and we saw followed by thunders? Let's look at Job. Do we see thunders coming after it? After it a voice roareth, he what? Thundereth with his what? with his voice of his excellency and 
will not stay them when his voice is what? Heard. Verse 5. God thundereth marvelously with his what? Voice. So when we look at seven thunders, it is God's what? Voice. Voice. Can someone say amen to that? Now notice, at times when God unders his voice, at times when God thundereth, that doesn't mean you're going to understand. Because you can't understand unless God gives you the ability to understand. So we look at the seven thunders in, 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 in Revelation. They were sealed up. Notice what it says in verse 4 here. In verse 5 here. God thundereth marvelously with his what? Voice. Great things doeth he which what? We cannot comprehend. Did you catch that? Notice something else. There is a link between God thundering God roaring with the former and the latter rain. Let's look at verse 6. For he says to the snow, be thou on the earth, likewise to the small rain and to the what? Great rain of his strength. What is that, brothers and sisters? Early and latter rain. I just want to touch on something. I just saw this, and I'm just going to touch on something. And, and, and I haven't exhausted it, but I just want to just share it, and you can exhaust it. Is that right? As I exhaust it later. He sealeth up. Amen. You see that? Yep. We, see, we see the line, a, a, a roaring. We see thunder, right? We see uh, um, um, sealing up. But notice what's sealed up. The hand of every man. And I have reason to believe that when it says the hand of every man, remember, in Revelation, he wasn't able to do what? Right. Because right. it was what? Sealed up. Are y'all with me, brothers and sisters? So the seven uh, thunders, we know that it is the what of the Lord? The voice of the Lord. All right? The voice of the Lord. Now, do we see anywhere where God's voice in Scripture thundereth seven times. Let's go to the book of, let's go to the book of, you said Revelation 5? <laughs> We're going to the book of Psalms 29. Psalms 29, amen? Psalms 29. We're starting with verse 3. Psalms 29 and verse 3. So we understand that a lion roars, that's Christ, the lion of the tribe of Judah. When he, lo when he roars, somebody prophesies, doesn't he? And when he roars, seven thunders utter their voices. We understand that when, se when the thunder, when the seven thunders utter their voices, these are the voice of what? The voice of the Lord. Amen? All right. And when the voice of the Lord speaks, does everybody always comprehend? No, no. no. So we find out in, in Psalms chapter 29, verse 3, we see the voice of the Lord is upon the what? Water. Waters. The God of glory does what? Thunder. Thundereth. The Lord is upon what? Water. Many waters. Did we see the angel or did we see the Lord upon many waters in Daniel? I keep saying Daniel. In Revelation chapter 10. Yes. Right. He was not, right? So we see here in Psalms. That the Bible lets us know when the voice of the Lord, when he thunders, he's also standing upon many what? Amen. Waters. Many waters represents multitudes, nations, and, and tongues. Amen? Amen? Notice, now, as we look, I want to find out how many times is the voice of the Lord mentioned, because we know if the voice of the Lord is mentioned, there's also the voice of the Lord is God thundering, right? Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? The voice of, when God speaks, when it's the voice of the Lord, he thundereth. Now, notice what happens in verse 3. Let's count them. How many voices of the Lord do we see? Verse 3, the voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thundereth, and the Lord is upon many waters. How many voices of the Lord do we see there? How many? One. One. It says the voice of the Lord how many times? One time. Verse 4, the voice of the Lord is what? Powerful. 
The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. How many times do we see the voice of the Lord now? That's, that's two, so that's three times now, right? Verse 5, the voice of the Lord breaketh the cedar. How many times is that? Four times. Look at verse 7. The voice of the Lord divideth the flames of fire. What is that? Five. Look at verse 8. The voice of the Lord shaketh the wilderness. How many times is that? Six. Verse 9. The voice of the Lord maketh the hinds to calve. How many is that? Seven. So do we see the voice of the Lord seven times? So those are seven thunders. And here, thing. Let me. Let me. Can I just share something quickly? Just, just, just one thing. We need. We always have to do. And this, this is Millerite's rule. We can prove all things from the word of the Lord. The Bible explains itself. If you see it somewhere in the Bible, it's somewhere else. That's how he started. He allowed the Bible to interpret itself. Amen. And each time he takes the clear, it's going to unlock and unlock more. Now, here's the thing, brothers and sisters. Follow with me now. We're, 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 our premise is Millerite history, right? In Millerite history, we see in Millerite history, there is a commission. Uh, uh, the voice is to seal up the things that the seven thunders utter. So we see there's a sealing up in Millerite Adventist time, right? Yep. Amen? Yep. Amen. So we discover that this sealing up has to be linked with the book of Daniel. Come on now, somebody say amen. Is it connected with the book of Daniel? Because the whole, the whole unfolding of all these things find its origin from the little book. Right? It finds its origin from the little book. And we understand using the Bible to explain itself that the thundering is the voice of the Lord. Right? And we see that in, 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 in Psalms 29 that the voice of the Lord is, is spoken here how many times? Seven, Seven times. So now we must do this. Do we see anywhere in the book of Daniel where Daniel speaks about the voice of the Lord? Yes. <laughs> so if we, if we connect the dots, we can then find out a whole lot more of what is taking place in the book of Revelation chapter 10. All right. Are y'all with me? Yes. All right. Link after link. So now let's go and let's do some biblical archaeology in the book of Daniel. Let's begin to move the rocks away, brush away the dirt, move away the stones, excavate, and see if we can find the voice of the Lord. Because the voice of the Lord, these thunder, they originated out of the book of what? Daniel, right? So let's look at Daniel chapter 9, starting in verse 10. I did the research for you. Is that all right? Amen. But you can always check, check, check the research. My, hand, my hands are all dirty. Yes, right. We're Berean. That's right. You go back and you get my number. And if I, if I, if I, if I am wrong, you correct me. <laughs> Double dig. That's right. 9-10. Are you in, in Daniel 9-10? What are we looking for in Daniel? The voice of the Lord. And the voice of the Lord is also God what? Thundering. Right? And the voice of the Lord and God's thundering is linked with a lion roaring and what? Prophesying. The book of Daniel, chapter 9, verse 10 says, Neither have we obeyed what? The voice, the voice of the Lord. There it goes, underlined it. The voice of the Lord our God to walk in his what? Laws which he has set before us by his servants what? The prophets. Yea, all Israel have what? Transgressed thy law. Even by departing that they might not obey what? Thy voice. Therefore, the curse is poured upon us. And the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, because we have sinned against him. Now, brothers and sisters, let's follow the line. We discovered that the thunder is the what? We also discovered that the voice of the Lord is also linked with the book of what? And as it relates to the voice of the Lord, they did not obey the voice.
So the voice of the Lord is also linked, according to Daniel, with God's. Now, all of this, keep in mind, as I'm linking and linking, all of this leads us back to the book of Revelation chapter 10, right? What else is linked with the voice of the Lord? The curse. So we got the curse, we got the law, we have Daniel, we have the voice of the Lord always leading us back to what? Revelation. Revelation. What took place in Revelation? Something was what? Are you all with me? Now, verse 11, Yea, all Israel have transgressed thy law, even by departing, that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore, the curse is what? Poured out. out. So when the curse is poured out, what comes out of the cup of the curse? All right, let's find out. Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 20 will tell us what is being poured out. So whatever is being poured out is linked with the curse, which is linked with the law, which is linked with Daniel, which is linked with the voice of the Lord, which is linked with Revelation chapter 10, which is linked with what is sealed up. (laughs) Jeremiah 7, verse 20. Do we have it? All right. Jeremiah 7 and verse 20. Amen. Amen. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, behold, my what? Anger and my what? Fury shall be what? Poured out. So the curse is poured out. What comes out of the curse when it's poured out? Anger and fury. Are you all with me? Now, let's jump back to Daniel. Chapter 9. So when God pours out his curse, what comes out? Anger and fury. fury. How do we know that? We just read it. (laughs) Did I say it? No, No, the Bible said it. That's right. God's word has said it. Now, all of this is linked with the what of the Lord? Voice. Voice of the Lord. All this comes in the voice of the Lord. Okay, now let's look and jump down and see what Daniel has to say about this anger and this fury. O Lord, according to all thy what? I'm sorry, verse 16. Daniel 9, 16. Daniel 9, 16. We're checking our answer now. We said the curses is connected with anger and fury. Now, just like in mathematics, we're going to check our answer. All right? Look at verse 16. It says, O Lord, according to all thy righteousness, I beseech thee, let thy what? Anger Anger and thy what? Fury be turned away from thy city, Jerusalem, thy holy mountain, because of our what? Sins and for the iniquities of our fathers, Jerusalem and thy people are become a reproach to all that are about us. So God, Daniel is praying and asking God to turn off the faucet. What's being poured out? Anger. Anger and fury. And anger and fury is connected with God's, with the curses. Curses is connected with God's what? Law. Law. God's law is connected with what? Daniel Daniel and the what? Voice Voice of the Lord because they obey not the voice of the Lord. Amen? All right. Now, let's look at the anger and let's look at the fury. Let's first look at the, the anger. The anger is found in the book of Deuteronomy 29. If you would turn there quickly. Deuteronomy 29. I got to speed up because that clock is ticking. It's moving fast. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. I'm trying to go slow, but I want to go fast too so I can get it all in. Deuteronomy chapter 29. Deuteronomy chapter 29, verses 27 and 28. The Bible says, And the anger of the Lord was kindled against this land to bring upon it all the what? Curses that are written in this book. And the Lord rooted them out of their land in what? Anger and in what? Wrath and in what? Great indignation to cast them into another land as it is this day. So his anger, his indignation 
when God pours out his anger and his indignation and his wrath, what happens to God's people? They are uprooted from their land and they're scattered in other lands. Are you all with me? But it's not just anger. What else is it? Fury. Fury. What do we first see? Fury. Well, the first time we see the word fury in connection with God's pouring out his wrath or his, his indignation, we see in the book of Leviticus chapter 26. Turn there with me. Leviticus chapter 26, verse 28. Leviticus 26, verse 28. All right. Now, brothers and sisters, let's read verse 27 and 28. And if ye will not for all this hearken unto me. Hearken unto what? The voice of the Lord. But walk contrary unto me. I will walk contrary unto you in what? Fury, and I, even I, will chastise you, what? Seven times. Let's follow our line. The fury and the anger is connected with God's what? Curse, Curse, which is linked with God's law, law, and is in the book of what? Daniel. Daniel, which is the voice of the Lord, which they did not obey. The voice of the Lord is the thunder. And the thunder is found in Revelation 10, which was what? Sealed up. up. Are you all with me? Amen. Amen. Link after link. Now, let's follow this word fury, okay? Because we want to check our answer with this whole seven times issue. Is that okay? All right. What is this seven times? Let's go to the book of Isaiah. Isaiah is going to link us to let us find out what this seven times is. Because the seven times is also God's what? The seven times is always linked with what? The fury. You cannot separate the fury from the seven times. Isaiah what? Isaiah 63. Praise the Lord. Y'all anxious. Praise the Lord. I'm excited. Now, the fury... And the anger are linked together. The book of Isaiah chapter 63, verse 3. Isaiah chapter 63, verse 3 says, make sure everybody's with me. I still hear pages. Isaiah chapter 63 and verse 3. Isaiah chapter 63 and verse 3. I have trodden the, ra- I have trodden the winepress alone, and of the people there was none with me. For I have tread them in my what? anger and trample them in my what? Fury. Now this anger and this fury is linked with what? Trampling and shredding down, right? It is also referred to a day of vengeance and a day of redemption. Look at verse 4. For it says, for the day of what? Vengeance is in my heart and the year of my redeemed is come. Now notice in verse 6, it repeats, and I will tread down what? The people in my what? Anger. Anger. Now notice, with the fury, we see God is now doing what? Treading down. All right, is that clear? And treading down, what else is he doing? He tramples. Is that right? Is that what he does? He tramples and he treads down, right? Now, let's follow that trample and treading down, right? Because the Bible needs to explain trampling and treading down, right? Because these are just words. What does trampling and treading down mean? Does it mean just... Is just trampling and treading down? Or is there more light revealed when God tramples and treads down his people? Well, I have to go with what the Bible says. The Bible lets me know in the book of Revelation, chapter 11, it deals with trampling and treading down. Revelation chapter 11 and verse 2. Now, remember, as you're turning there, Daniel lets us know 
that God is pouring out his fury and his anger upon Jerusalem, right? And Jerusalem is God's holy city, right? Amen. Now notice something here. In the book of Revelation chapter 11, verse 2, it says, But the court which is without the, the, with, which is without, the court which is without the temple, leave out and measure it not, for it is given to who? Gentiles. The Gentiles, and the holy city shall they what? Tread, Tread underfoot what? Forty, Forty and two months. Did you catch it or did you miss it? So we discovered that a trampling and a treading down is linked with a time period. How long is a time period? 40 and 2 months. So if we take 40 and 42, 40 and 2 months, time 30, what do we get? 30 days in a month. 1,260. Are you all with me? Amen. All right. Do we see the same thing, the treading, the same treading down taking place anywhere else in Scripture? This link with the time prophecy. The book of Daniel. Let's go to the book of Daniel. The book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 12. Daniel chapter 12. Daniel chapter 12 and verse 7. Daniel chapter 12 and verse 7. Amen. And I heard the man clothed in linen which was upon the waters of the river, which he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven, and swear by him that liveth for what? Ever and ever that it shall be for a what? Times, times, times and a half a time. And when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished how long is the time, time and a half a time? 12 and 60 years, using a day-year principle. When God pours out his fury and when he pours out his anger, how long would he tread down his people? 1,260 years. But we can't stop right there. Because Jesus has shared some more light on this treading down. Let's go to the book of Luke, chapter 21. Luke, chapter 21. Luke, chapter 21. Luke, chapter 21, and we're going to start with verse 20. If you have it, say amen. Luke 21, 20. Here's what the Bible says. And when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that what? The desolation thereof is nigh. Then let them which are in what? Judea flee to where? The mountains. And let them which are in the midst depart out, and let them that are in the countries enter where? Therein. For these are the days of what? Vengeance. And all that all things which are written may be fulfilled. This destruction of the Jews is going to come to pass. Jesus says these are the days of what? Vengeance. vengeance. Now, brothers and sisters, good students, did we ever read about the day of vengeance before? Yes. What do we read about the day of vengeance at? With the treading down. Where do we find that at? Hold your finger there and go to Isaiah again. Isaiah chapter 63. Hold your finger because it's going right back to Luke 21. Isaiah chapter 63. Isaiah 63, 3 talks about, I will tread them in my what? Anger and trample them in my fury. We know that treading and trampling of God's people is linked with a time period. How long is that time period? 1260 years. And we also realize that Isaiah says that this is the day of vengeance. You see verse 4? For the day of vengeance is in my what? Heart. So Jesus talks about the coming destruction of Jerusalem. He says that is the day of what? Vengeance. Right? So the day of vengeance is linked with God trampling or treading down his people, which is linked with a time period, which is how long? 1260 years. Now let's finish reading. 
But woe unto them, in the book of Luke 21, verse 23, but woe unto them that are with what? Child, and to them that suck in those days, for there shall be great distress in the land and wrath upon the people. Verse 24, and they shall fall by the what? Edge of the sword, and shall be led away away what? Captive unto what? All nations, and Jerusalem shall be what? Slow down, trodden down. Trotting down is connected with a time period. How long is that time period? 12 and 60 years. So God is saying, hey, this 12 and 60 years is taking place, right? Then he goes on to say, of the Gentiles. Who's doing it? The Gentiles or the heathens. But he goes on to say, until the what? Times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Uh Uh-oh. We got to add some more math to this thing. Because Jesus says, times. So if it's the times of the Gentiles, we have to take the time and add another time. That time is 1260, so it must be 1260 time. How much time do we get? Ooh. Ooh. So there's a treading down for how long? That's a trampling of God's people, which linked with a seven times, which is God's fury and his what? Which is linked with his, which is linked with his, found in the book of, which is the voice of the Lord, which is found in, which is, you all are good students. You all are good students. But let's check our answer. Can we see that there are two times? Now, let's look in the book of Acts. Can we use that principle of adding two 2520s? Is that a biblical principle that we can use? The book of Acts chapter 3. The book of Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3 and verse 19. Acts chapter 3 and verse 19. Turn quickly, saints. I got 29 minutes and 24 seconds. (laughs) The Bible says, Repent ye therefore and be what? Converted that your what? Sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Did he say time of refreshing? He says times of refreshing. What are the times of refreshing? To point out of what? God's Holy Spirit. Now, is there to point out of God's Holy Spirit? Let's go to the book of Joel. Turn quickly to Joel. Is the point of God's Spirit broken up into two parts? The book of Joel, Joel chapter 2, Joel chapter 2 and verse 23. Is the point point out of God's Spirit broken up into two parts or two divisions? Joel chapter 2 and verse 23, the Bible says, Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you what? The former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down upon you what? The former rain and the latter rain in the first month. So how many parts are there to the rain? Two parts. There's a former and there's a latter rain. So how many parts must there be to the times of the Gentiles? Two parts. And we've already given one part, right? One part, let's put up here, one part. One part is 1260. The other part is 1260. You put them both together, you have 2520. Are you all with me? Praise the Lord. You guys are just great. Praise the Lord. So, we go back and let's bag everything up. 2520 is the times of the Gentiles, so there's a treading down. We have to add two, which is also the what? Seven times, times, which is God's, which is God's, which is God's, which comes from his, and it was exhibited and revealed in the book of Daniel. And Daniel was open and, and, and 
Revelation 10, which is the voice of the Lord. So we started off from Revelation 10, right? Something is sealed up. We find out that the thunders are the voice of the Lord. Which the voice of the Lord has to be linked with because that's the book that was opened in Revelation, right? And the voice of the Lord is found in Daniel. And we found out they did not obey the voice of the Lord. Therefore, they violated God's what? Therefore, the curse was poured out of them. And when God pours out his curse, he pours out and fury. And fear, anger is his indignation and his wrath. And fury is his seven times. And fury is also his trampling. And trampling is also his treading down. And treading down is for a time period of 1260 years. And the wonderful number it says you have to multiply it by two because it's the times of the Gentiles, which gives us 2520. So, back to Revelation chapter 10. Back to Revelation chapter 10. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Revelation chapter 10. So we find out in verse 4 that there's a sealing up, right? And when there's a sealing up, there's a sealing up of what? Vision and prophecy, right? Where do we get that from? Daniel Chapter 9, verse 24. So there's a great disappointment, right, in Millerite history. Notice what happens after the great disappointment. What are they told to do in verse 11? And, are you with me? Yeah. Revelation 10, 11. And he said unto me, thou must what? Prophesy, Prophesy again before many what? People. People and what? Nations and tongue, tongue and kings. kings. So after the disappointment of 18... 44, they are told to do what? Prophesy again. Are you with me? 11, by the time we get to um, chapter 11, verse 1, they see the sanctuary, right? But notice something. What happens as time goes on in the Advent movement? What happens to their prophesying again? The Bible lets us know in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, they're told to do what? Prophesy again, but as time goes on, something happens when they prophesy again. Something happens when they prophesy again. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 8. The Bible says, charity never faileth, but whether there be what? Prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall what? Cease. Whether there be knowledge, they shall what? Vanish away. For we know what? In part, and we prophesy. In part. I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. So they begin to prophesy again. But as time goes on in our Advent history, they begin to prophesy in part. The Bible tells us in verse 10, why do they prophesy in part? Verse 10 says, but when that which is perfect is come, that which is in part shall be what? Done away. What is that which is perfect? No, 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 no. No, no, no. No, no, no. We got to let the Bible explain itself. We are not to speculate according to the Son of the Lord. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 9. What is that which is perfect that come? Then that which is in part is done away. Hebrews chapter 9. Turn there. Hebrews chapter 9. Are you all still with me? Amen. Hebrews chapter 9. Amen. Let's start with verse 12. Hebrews chapter 9. When that which is perfect is come, that which is in part, what happens to that? Done away. It says, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood... 
No, 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 that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking at verse 11. I'm reading verse 12, verse 11. But Christ, you got a verse 11? We're on the same page? But Christ, being come a high priest of good things to come, that which is perfect is what? Come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle. Uh-oh. What is that which is perfect that is come? No, 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 no. I'm going to ask the question again. You, you tell me from the Bible. It says, but Christ being come a high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect what? Tabernacle. So it's the temple where? In heaven. Did you catch it? Or did you miss it? So what came? What was perfect? What was perfect was the heavenly tabernacle. And when that which is perfect is come, that which is in part is done away. What was in part? Back up, brothers and sisters. The times of the Gentiles. It's in parts. There are two. There's the 1260 on one end, paganism. There's the 1260 on the other end, papalism. Now, when we get down to the year 1863, When we get down to the year 1863, what happens in 1863? The church began to prophesy in part. Yeah, I didn't get it. They prophesied of the 1260, but they didn't prophesy like Jesus told them to. Of the other 1260. But 2 1260 gives you. 2520. Are you all with me? By the time we get down to 1901, if you take away, if you prophesy in part, that means you have no longer have two 20, 1260s, which you won't have a. Which you won't have a. You won't have a daily. Did y'all get that? Because the daily is taken away, which leads us from paganism to what? But if you remove the formula of having two 1260s, what else goes away? The daily. It's a domino effect. Now, notice something. So that which is perfect, when it comes, that which is in part is what? It is. Now it makes sense now. Now it makes sense. Why do we see James Wright, a Millerite Adventist, proclaiming the 2520 prophecy? off of the charts, off of the 1863 chart. History proves that he preached it off of the 1850 chart, right? Now we have it, in, in, and Brother Campbell has a quotation from him in, 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 in his notes. In 1850, he was saying that 2520 was the real deal. In 1863, he was saying it's the real deal. Eight, by the time, 1843, he's saying it's the real deal. 1850, he's saying it's the real deal. All the way up to 1863, it's gone no more. It ain't, it ain't a prime prophecy. Now, notice what happens when that which is perfect has come. 
That which in part is done away, God seals it up. And notice what's something. When God seals something up, does he blot out the information in the Bible? No. What does he seal up? He seals up the understanding. And he seals up the understanding until the time of the end. So we have two time of the end. So William Miller, according to Daniel 11:40, pinpoints the time of the end as 1798, when the king of the south, which is atheistic France, pushes at the king of the north, which is the papacy. But in the same verse, it says the king of the north shall push back at him. So some hundred plus years, we see that the king of the north, the papacy, comes back at the same power that caused to receive a deadly wound, giving us the year one. So we have how many times of the end? Two times of the end. And when a time of the end comes on the scene, what happens to the book of Daniel? It's opened up again. It's unsealed. So if it's unsealed again, now I want you to understand from, from their three histories, the history of the disciples, the history of Millerite history, and the mystery of, of, of the remnant of 144,000. Each one of those histories, each one prophesied in part. As the history was being unfolding, God was giving more and more. He was opening and he was sealing. He was opening and he's sealing. So after Millerite history, we can pinpoint a time when truth is sealed up. What date? 1863 is our way marker. Why? Because by the time we come to 1863, we have a new chart on the scene. The new chart doesn't have the 2520 on it because the brethren said it was not a time promise. Now, we, now, listen, I want you to really think about this. Why did that happen? Because God did what? He sealed it up. To what time? The time of the end, which is? So what do we see should come back on the scene after? What should we see come back on the scene after? No, 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 no. What should we see come back on the scene after 1798? Understanding is coming back. Check it out. Understanding is coming back. And then when you understand the daily, now this is what's happening in this movement. Brothers and sisters, listen to me. This is what's happening in this movement. It wasn't the 25, 21st. God had to give them the daily because it was the daily that, 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 that Daniel chapter 12 said that the wicked couldn't understand. It said it was sealed up. The wise would understand the daily. <laughs> so the daily comes back on the scene. And, and brother and start, you know the brother. <laughs> we start, the daily comes back on the scene. And after the daily, all of a sudden, God starts opening up mine. And somebody looks and says, what is that 2520 up there? I don't know. Let's go check it out. Then all of a sudden, oh, there are two 2520s. Oh. And now it's beginning to open it up. It starts opening and opening, and God is laying down the foundations again that William Miller started. So now it makes sense. So why don't you see Ellen White write 2520 in her writings? It was sealed up. But does she speak about it? Yes, she speaks about it in a language that the wise can understand. How do we know? She endorses the 1843 chart and said it was by the hand of the Lord. She endorses the 1850 chart. She said it was a prophecy of this chart in the Bible. Right? She says that. She endorses that. Then she says prophetic 
Period. She says, after the disappointment, we were led to our Bibles to search the prophetic periods. And we discovered that the same evidence that led us to 1844 proved that they terminated in 1844. She says, they, the prophetic periods. problem is, brothers, we're starting in the middle of the book. We're trying to explain something at the end, and we haven't got the beginning. How can you understand the end of a thing from the beginning? So now we understand what took place. Why, you know, you're like, man, Ellen White, why didn't you just make it clear? Why didn't you just say 25? Because God is proving his people. You know what I'm saying? He's proving his people. He's testing them. He's testing them to see what they're made of. And when you begin to study, man, it's so clear to me. It's so clear to you because you're a wise version. William Miller started out as an argument. What's that again? When William Miller started out with the Bible, it was an argument. It's an argument. Wrong. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. History is being repeated to their very letter. Amen. So we see it. One thing that the Bible lets us know that these truths were going to be resealed to what time? The time of the end. So we see clearly what comes on the scene again? The daily. What comes on the scene again? The 2520. We understand now again that there are two desolating powers. That's lost sight of. We understand that. We understand now again that there is Islam and Bible prophecy. All these truths are swelling and swelling and swelling. And as the prophet said, new and advanced truths shall be given to God's people. And listen, you can't get new and advanced truths until you get basic math. That's right. Yeah, that's it. That's why it's called a great controversy. That makes sense, brothers and sisters? Amen. Amen. So now we have an understanding why God did what he did. He sealed up the voice of the Lord. Yeah. He prophesied. The vision and prophecy are now being opened to us as a people. And God is calling you to prophesy again. But you know what? You're not going to prophesy in part, nope. but in whole. Amen. You know what? And Israel is blinded in part <laughs> because they only see in part. But blessed be the eyes that can see these things. Blessed be the eyes that believe these things. Blessed be the eyes that we can hear the voice of the wonderful number letting us know that God is now speaking again. Rebecca said, at the end, it shall speak, it shall speak it not and not lie. Now, and Terry, and I noticed something, brothers and sisters. Was this the end? The first end. The first end. Huh? But we have what? We have another end, don't we? It comes on the scene after 1798. We have one that comes on the scene after 1989. So who is speaking? What's speaking? Habakkuk says at the end, it shall speak and not lie. What's speaking to us again? 2300 day prophecy is speaking unto us again. What is it telling us? That we're not in the judgment of the dead. We're in the judgment of the living. What else is speaking to us again? 2520. What does it say to us? We're in the gathering time. That God is gathering his people. Amen. All right. And, uh, they're not ready for the 2450 yet. <laughs> if, if, if we put, if we put the 2300, we put the 2520 on the plate and they won't eat that. You can't even give them the 24, 2450. You know, this is all what the Millerite Adventists believe, brothers and sisters. And you know what? Let me tell you something. I'm realizing something, is that I can prove what I believe in. Amen. Amen. I can prove it from the Bible. Amen. And you know what's the great thing? Even if you had tied my hands and didn't give me the spirit of prophecy, I still can prove it. Amen. Amen. But don't let me fight with both hands. <laughs> Somebody will get knocked out with some truth. Because I can prove what I believe in. I don't need... Read this. You understand? 
I mean, understand we got to be able to prove all things from God's word, and you're going to have a second witness of the spirit of prophecy confirming that what you have confirmed is true. What we have just walked through it is clear as a nose in your face. Even a child could understand it. Yeah, that God has sealed this thing up and he's reopened it in the time of the end. And brothers and sisters, this is the great thing. You and I, God, the prophets saw us in the Bible. Amen. It says they without us cannot be made perfect. If we don't finish this thing, Moses got to come back down. If we don't finish this thing, <laughs> Enoch has to come back down. We don't finish this thing, they can't come out the grave. Paul can't come up. We are the anchor men and women for Jesus Christ at the end. And God is going to allow us to finish this in victory if we are faithful. Amen? Amen. How many want to take it across the finish line? How many? Want to usher in the second coming of Jesus Christ. How many want to give the loud cry like the Millerites gave the midnight cry? Brothers and sisters, let's consecrate ourselves to Jesus Christ that we may be found faithful. Because brothers and sisters, let me tell you, you know, in football, they have a good number that comes out first, right? And then they have all this training and then there's a cut. Then they have some more training, don't they? Correct me if I'm wrong. And then there's a cut. Then finally you get down and there is the A team. It's the team that's actually going to be the team that's going to play. Brothers and sisters, you don't want to get cut. If you're cut, you're cut because you chose to be cut. Not because the God is not revealing truth to you. Not the God is not mighty to save. Because we have chosen not to go all the way with Jesus. And let me tell you, brothers and sisters, let me warn you before I pray. There will be some rough waters ahead. Amen. Blood, fire. Your faith is going to be severely tried. But don't worry. God is holding you in his right hand as he holds the stars in his hand. Amen. He's able to keep you from falling. Amen? Amen. Amen. And let's commit ourselves to the fact that God is going to take us all the way through. Let us pray. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so, little ones to Father in heaven, I am so thankful, we are so thankful Amen. that when we were yet sinners, when we were enemies towards you, when we were ungodly, you sent your son to save us. Lord, I'm so thankful that you don't treat us the way that we deserve to be treated, that when we don't love you, you love us. And with your loving kindness have you drawn each and every one of us. And we hear your sweet voice beckoning to come into our heart for eternal abode. 
And I pray, dear Lord, that each and every person by the sound of my voice may surrender all of their hearts to Jesus Christ. And I know that there are those who are struggling with hereditary and cultivated tendencies to evil. But the reality is that your word has given us exceeding great and precious promises that by these we may become partakers of your divine nature. So Lord, as we begin to receive and are receiving these sealing messages, we pray that you would take away our carnal minds, our carnal hearts, and give us the heart and the mind of Jesus Christ. Lord, we don't want to be like that man in Jerusalem that prophesied seven years and perished in the very siege in which he prophesied of. And inspiration says not one Christian perished. Amen. If he perished, he was not a Christian. Amen. So Lord, scripture reveals that we can proclaim a message without being a Christian. And Lord, we want to be Christians to bear the message. We want to be Christ-like as we bear the message. We want to be Holy Ghost filled as we bear the message. And this comes to us as a gift. And you said we have not because we ask not. So as I close, I'm asking that you will pour and come to us as the rain, as the former and the latter rain, and that you will seal us with the Holy Spirit of promise, that we may be a part of that team that will make it to the very end of time. Thank you for unfolding these truths. Thank you, Lord, for again opening up the little book to us. Thank you for Millerite rules for interpretation. Thank you for the 1843 and the 18, 1843 and the 1850 chart. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord, for giving us such a beautiful history. Lord, help us to be faithful. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.